Freya's interactions with other gods and goddesses also reflect this troubling dynamic. Many divine beings in Danmaki are portrayed as flawed, but Freya's flaws are treated with a level of indulgence that is frustrating. Rather than challenging her behavior, other characters often enable it, which only reinforces her sense of invincibility. This is especially apparent in the interactions with her fellow gods who, rather than reprimanding her, often seem enamored by her charm. Additionally, the story continues to provide opportunities for Freya to showcase her abilities and influence, reinforcing the notion that her beauty and power make her untouchable. This lack of accountability not only tarnishes her character arc, but also diminishes the impact of her actions on the overall narrative. So, after all this, is Freya redeemable? In my opinion, no. Her actions go beyond a mere obsession. They embody a toxic philosophy that equates beauty with virtue and manipulation with love. While many fans might swoon over her charm and looks, it's crucial to recognize the underlying issues at play. Freya serves as a complex character, but complexity doesn't equate to redemption. She's a reminder of how societal norms can cloud our judgment and lead us to forgive the unforgivable. In a world that desperately needs to hold characters accountable for their actions, especially when those actions affect countless lives, it's time we took a step back and critically examined the implications of characters like Freya. At the end of the day, Freya may be a goddess of love, but her brand of love is anything but pure. And while beauty can captivate, it should never excuse manipulation and control. If we're going to celebrate characters, Let's celebrate the ones who show genuine love and respect for others, rather than those who wield their beauty as a weapon. In conclusion, while Freya may be an intriguing character with her complex motivations and godly powers, her actions speak volumes about the dangers of toxic love and manipulation. The glamorization of her character obscures the very real consequences of her behavior, leaving fans to grapple with the uncomfortable truth that beauty does not equate to virtue. It's time for a cultural shift in how we view and interpret characters like Freya. We need to question why we so often forgive characters like Freya for their transgressions simply because they are attractive. In real life, we know that manipulative behavior can lead to harmful outcomes, and it's vital to extend that understanding to our fictional narratives. Characters should be held to a standard that reflects the complexities of human morality. Instead of glorifying characters who manipulate and control, we should focus on those who demonstrate integrity, respect, and genuine love. It's essential to embrace stories that highlight accountability and the importance of consent in all relationships. As fans, we should strive to engage with narratives critically. Celebrating a character's beauty should not blind us to their moral failings. Instead, we can appreciate characters who embody the qualities we aspire to uphold, kindness, respect, and emotional intelligence. By doing so, we can create a richer, more nuanced understanding of what it means to be a hero or a villain in both fiction and reality. In the end, Freya serves as a cautionary tale. While she may be captivating and enchanting, her actions remind us that beauty can often mask darker intentions. It's a reminder to look beyond the surface and hold our favorite characters accountable for their actions. By doing so, we can foster a healthier understanding of love, power, and morality in the stories we cherish. So here's to examining our beloved characters with a critical eye and embracing narratives that prioritize genuine connections over superficial charm. After all, true beauty lies not just in appearance but in the heart and intentions behind it. Alright, let's dive deep into the tangled web that is Freya from Danmaki. Or is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? For the uninitiated, before we get into the nitty-gritty of why I think she's totally irredeemable, let's set the stage. Freya is not just a goddess. She's a stunningly beautiful figure in a world where beauty often translates to power and influence. Her allure captivates fans and characters alike. But beauty aside, her actions raise some serious ethical questions, especially when it comes to her obsession with Belcranel. First off, let's talk about her looks. Freya is the quintessential representation of beauty in the series, a tall, striking figure with flowing hair and a charm that could probably make anyone weak in the knees. This is key to her character. Her beauty acts as a veil, masking her deeply manipulative nature. It's no secret that many fans overlook her morally questionable actions simply because she's attractive. This is where things get murky. 
In the world of Danmaki, where gods and goddesses interact with mortals, Freya takes things to a whole new level of obsession. She doesn't just admire Bell from afar. She actively seeks to make him hers. This isn't just a cute little crush. It's a full-blown case of stalking that, quite frankly, raises a lot of red flags. Her beauty is like a double-edged sword. On one hand, it draws people in and creates a sense of admiration. On the other, it creates a blind spot where her immoral actions can be dismissed or even romanticized. The notion that someone as beautiful as Freya could do anything wrong feeds into the larger trope in media where gorgeous characters are often given a pass for their misdeeds. It's a problematic trend that diminishes the gravity of her actions. One of the most jaw-dropping moments that really cements Freya's irredeemable nature is when she brainwashes the entire city. Seriously, let that sink in for a moment. We're not talking about some petty mind games. She literally bends the will of countless people to her desires. The fact that she has the power to control minds just underscores her godly status, but it also highlights how far she's willing to go to achieve her goals. Let's break it down. Freya doesn't just want to be with Belle. She wants everyone to worship him and, by extension, her. She crafts an entire narrative that places her at the center, and this narrative comes at the expense of individual free will. In a world where gods already have an immense influence over mortals, Freya takes it to an extreme that raises serious ethical concerns. When she orchestrates this brainwashing, it isn't just a plot device. It becomes a reflection of her character. Freya sees people as tools, using their admiration and adoration to fulfill her desires. The manipulation of an entire city isn't just a storyline. It illustrates her complete disregard for the autonomy of others. While many fans might swoon over her beauty and charisma, it's essential to ask, at what cost? What kind of person, even a goddess, thinks that brainwashing is an acceptable method to win someone's affection? The implications of this brainwashing extend beyond Bell. Imagine living in a city where your thoughts and feelings are not your own. Freya's actions raise questions about consent and agency. It is a form of control that is chilling, particularly in a world where the line between divine power and mortal freedom becomes increasingly blurred. Freya's obsession with Belle is another aspect that makes her character tough to swallow. Her feelings aren't genuine love. They're possessive and self-serving. True love should be built on mutual respect and consent, but Freya's brand of love is anything but healthy. She's a walking red flag, and yet she's portrayed in such a way that many fans still root for her. This is baffling to me. Her obsession is not just about wanting Belle. It's about needing to control him, to mold him into what she desires. Freya sees Belle not as an individual, but as an object to possess. She wants him to be hers, and her tactics to achieve that are downright creepy. Whether it's manipulating events to place herself in his path, or using her beauty to cloud his judgment, Freya's actions screamed toxic. This obsession manifests in various ways throughout the series. Freya's attempts to ensnare Belle are often framed as romantic gestures, but let's be honest, they are anything but. The concept of love that Freya exhibits is riddled with manipulation and a blatant disregard for Belle's autonomy. When a character exhibits such extreme behavior, it's crucial to examine the underlying message being conveyed. Moreover, her obsession leads to harmful consequences not just for Belle, but for those around him. Characters who care for Belle, like Hestia and Ace, become collateral damage in Freya's quest to possess him. This creates a toxic dynamic where love is equated with ownership and obsession, ultimately distorting the true meaning of affection. Here's where it gets even more complicated. Many fans of Danmaki actively forgive Freya for her actions, citing her beauty and charm as redeeming qualities. It's as if her looks are a shield against any criticism. This phenomenon is not unique to Freya. We see it in various media where beautiful characters get a pass for their morally questionable behavior simply because they're attractive. This is a troubling narrative that sends a dangerous message, that beauty can absolve you of wrongdoing. By romanticizing Freya's obsession and manipulation, fans gloss over the serious implications of her actions. When a goddess can brainwash an entire city and still have legions of fans cheering her on, it raises questions about how we perceive morality and accountability in our favorite characters. 
The trend of forgiving characters for their misdeeds simply because they are attractive perpetuates harmful stereotypes. It reinforces the idea that one's worth is tied to physical appearance rather than moral character. This is a narrative that has serious implications for how we view relationships in real life, as it suggests that looks can overshadow ethical considerations. Moreover, this blind forgiveness also impacts the narrative itself. It can lead to a skewed portrayal of morality where characters who behave poorly face little to no consequences. In Freya's case, she often escapes scrutiny, allowing her to continue her manipulative ways without repercussion. This not only undermines the stakes within the story, but also diminishes the growth of other characters who might struggle with their own moral dilemmas. In the long run, Freya's actions don't just impact her directly. They ripple through the entire world of Danmaki. By brainwashing the city and playing puppet master, she creates a toxic environment that influences the lives of countless individuals. The consequences of her actions don't simply disappear. They create a legacy of manipulation that lingers long after the events unfold. What's even more disheartening is how her character is treated in subsequent arcs. Instead of facing accountability for her manipulation and obsession, she often finds herself in scenarios where her beauty and power overshadow her wrongdoings. This creates a dangerous precedent where characters can act without consequences as long as they fit the hot archetype.